What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker. Amir Rahimi. And today on The Great Debaters, it's Eric B. and Rakim time. Get ready. All right, Amir. So today on The Great Debaters, we're going to revisit one of the best albums in rap history, Paid in Full by Eric B. and Rakim. It's pretty flawless from top to bottom. It's one of my favorite best albums episode I did. Uh, Big Trey D and I mm. did a best albums on this episode, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And we're going to do something a little different as look at some of the singles. So Amir, educate the people on what the singles are, because we're going to go through those and, and decide what our favorite single is and why. So half the album is singles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 10 track album. But we want to switch it on you guys, so uh, we'll name the singles just in case you weren't aware. One is I Ain't No Joke. Another one is Eric B. is President. Another one is Move the Crowd. Another one is I Know You Got Soul. And the last one is Paid in Full. Title track. Title track. So, with that being said, we're going to go over our favorites. So, who shall start this one? Well, let's go with Paid in Full or Title Track. <clears throat> okay. That song is noteworthy and amazing on many levels. I prefer the original version versus what they pushed the remix. Or the remix. Um, yeah. The I, cold cut or mini yeah, whatever uh, remix, which I do like too, but the original is just the original too good. The original is too much better in my opinion. But that being said, I think they needed to do it because what I'm about to say, it's only one verse. It's uh, one of the few songs in rap history that's only one verse that was a single and that's as phenomenal as it is. So the imagery, how Rock Him flows, and I think, you know, hinting at his criminal background, <laughs> uh, alluding to it in a way, I thought was all great, but then, you know, also him, you know, trying to turn over and be righteous and, and do the right things. I think was admirable in the verse, and uh, I love the beat on it. I loved mm. the interaction with Eric B at the end. I thought it was pretty phenomenal and flawless. What about you? And I agree. I like how they set it up. Who they're rolling with is Rush. You know, all these these cool things they just add to the song. The scratch, and at the end, uh, Rock him talking about his favorite food, which would be fish. fish. You know, his um, favorite dish. His favorite dish, you know, and him even talking about, you know, how he doesn't like to dream about getting paid, so he digs into his rhyme book and all these things. So, he he's very clever, very witty, as we all know. A lot of people consider him one of the greatest. So uh, he demonstrates that all throughout this album. Some very clever lines, and "Paid in Full" is one of my favorite three as well. That song is just mm. like great stuff. All right, what's another single, man? So, another one of my favorites would be Eric B. as President. Okay. Man, I think... Thank you for your support. <laughs> I like that. You know, they made shirts out of this thing, uh, out of multiple lyrics on this song. I've seen shirts floating around, you know, No Tricks in 86. My D I nominated my DJ, The President, you know. Or maybe that was actually on another one, but this is Eric B. as President, okay. so we'll consider it that. Um, <laughs> I was going to say. Okay. I was going to say. Whatever. But um, aside from that, this song is extremely special. The scratching at the end as well. Also, one very interesting thing about this song is when it was first released, mm -hmm. it was Eric B. featuring Rock Kim. It wasn't Eric B. and Rock Kim. And this reminds me of during this time, it was the DJs and the artists on the cover, and it was usually the DJ's name before the, the, the that was rapper. Off, that was often the case. So I just find it very interesting how this time in rap the DJ was so prominent mm -hmm. and Eric B was looking for the best rapper in New York. Now it's like the rapper is looking for the best producer. So right. it's just crazy how times change and, and things happen in different eras. So I thought that was noteworthy. But the lyricism on this song is also great. It's a much longer song than the title track Paid in Full. <sighs> and it's, it's a fair introduction. So... That's true. It's a phenomenal song, and it's the one that broke them and, and helped a lot of people transition into what later be known as the f slow flow or more of a mm -hmm. relaxed flow than a lot of artists were doing at the time, because in 86, you still had uh, people that were very loud. Uh, one obvious example is LL Cool J, 
and people were rapping a lot faster and Rakim was much more in the pocket, much slower, much more of a quote unquote controlled flow. So that, that was definitely a change. And then we saw EPMD also from Long Island come out after him. And then we saw a lot of people start varying their flows a lot more. Even though LL had done it before on radio, I think it became more, uh, you know, Deary Vet, for instance, for those that are familiar with the album. Uh, but Rakim helped <clears throat> make that more popular. So, uh, another single that I love, I Ain't No Joke. Yes. That's uh, my daughter Lauren, her favorite Eric B. and Rakim oh, song. Nice. And uh, her favorite lyric is, I hold the mic like a grudge, which I thought was <laughs> phenomenal. So, that song, I love the video. Flavor Flav in there. I love the horn. I love the sample. I love just everything about it, man. The scratching. It was just, it's just an amazing song and one of those ones that till to till this day, you know, I just get excited when I hear it. True, and to start off the album like that was great. It's a very, you know, it's one of the more hardcore songs on the album, but it doesn't even cuss. No. So not at all. That's just so awesome, and apparently it's one of the songs that took longer to record. It took four days to record, which uh, is long by their standards in that era. So um, I thought that was also impressive, you know, keeping it hardcore, you know, to the Eric B. and Rock Kim standard without cursing, uh, and that was dope. <coughs> and also just the punchlines and just everything is just so special about the song and the and the, and the placement of it to be in the first. Let them let him know that he's not to be messed with on the microphone. So I know Joke's phenomenal, and then I know you got Soul is another one. That one is one of my favorites just because of the beat and uh, how he flows. And it seems like Rakim normally is a very steely, kind of precise, forceful, and definitive flow. But I always got the sense with uh, this one, I know you got soul, that he was actually having a little more fun. It just sounded, his voice sounded a little different. He sounded a little happier, for lack of a better way to describe mm -hmm. it. And I always kind of envisioned him a little bit even smiling or smirking when he was rapping this song. So I just, I just love it. Um, James Brown sample, the, the fact of him, uh, <laughs> we got it. I just yeah. love the beat, man. The music of it is phenomenal. The beat, the sample, is something that gives me a very nostalgic feel to it as well. I mean, this is one of the first albums I'd heard, uh, and this song was one of my favorites as well. But it just reminds me so much of middle school, this song. I don't okay. know why. Maybe it's just, it's probably the production of it, especially, but indeed, I do love Rockin's flow on this and, and the way he did it. But on top of that, another one of my, I mean, every song is like a favorite, right, on this album. But another one would be Move the Crowd, right. which would be the last thing we'll talk about. Move the Crowd, which he talks about the uh, uh, MC, was that in Eric B is present, I think, where he says, to me, MC means move, move the, the crowd. crowd. So I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, and then to have a song reference now here, Move the Crowd, which was great, you know. This is another one of those great songs, which shows, once again, Rakim's excellence on the mic. Of course. And then the video, I thought was interesting, just how they executed that, and it tied into it, where you had people kind of listening to Rakim That's speak, right. and it was kind of like a, a lecture of sorts, which doesn't really work with Move the Crowd, but it also showed <clears throat> Rakim's potency as, some, as an orator, as someone that people would really stop what they were doing and focus on what he was saying which i think the people that know and love eric man rock Hem's music did that and mm -hmm. it's a testament today that in 2019 we're talking about an album and songs that came out in 1986 or 1987 so it worked <laughs> it did 30 plus years man it still sounds great so for you amir what's uh your favorite single on paid in full and why Favorite single is Eric B. is President. Uh, man, that song is special. Six minutes-ish. Um, the length of it, the, the DJ, 
work on the end of the track as well. Just the clever lines from, from Rock Kim and also for this to be their first song together and just the chemistry that was evident there was pretty dope. I also love the name of the song, Eric P is President. You know, just so much genius on one song. You know, uh, it's a special quotables throughout the whole thing as well that have been sampled and altered and, and people have talked about this song and the lyrics within it for years to come. Right. For me, I'm gonna go with, I ain't no joke. Mm. Um, it's either that or I know you got soul. Uh. Um, all the songs on this album I love, <clears throat> all for different reasons or similar reasons, but definitely different ones also. But I ain't no joke, I just, the fact that I had heard Eric B as president before and some of the other songs, but like you had said, just to start off the album with that and then how forceful it is and then later to see the video and just have that added in, uh, I just think it, it made this song mean a lot more to me. And I think that his, just everything about that song I think is amazing. That's um, great. And you know, there's some scratching in there. I love scratching. It's just excellent. But that's what I think and that's what Amir thinks. Let us know what you guys think when you like, subscribe, and share this video from The Great Debaters. Hit us up in the comment section, we'll hit you back. I'm Soren Baker. Amir Amy. Paid in full. What's the best single? Hit us up, let us know what you think. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.